The Parker Solar Probe has set off to make observations of the Sun, but decided to pay a little visit to Venus on its way. When it reached the planet's dark side, it made this amazing video. For the first time in history, we've managed to see the surface of Venus through the clouds without using any powerful radars. All it took was just a probe flying by. NASA's latest spacecraft will be sent to Venus in the next few years, and other countries and organizations will follow suit. That's going to be a real space race, and the grand prize in it will be finding alien life. It's happening! As there's a possibility that Venus was quite a habitable planet in the past. In this video, you'll find out why were scientists so sure that there were people living on Venus? How has this planet become a space probe killer? And how are new missions going to search for life on Venus? Why did astronomers believe that Venus was another Earth? In the 17th century, Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens was desperate to find signs of life on other planets. To do so, he invented a telescope that was pretty impressive by the then standards. He even contrived to see oceans on Mars and Jupiter through it, although there are no oceans there. As for Venus, it showed Huygens only a thick layer of clouds. He thought, if it's about the size of Earth, but lies closer to the Sun, it must be some sort of a tropical planet. Something like a Mexican resort. A bit too hot, but one cocktail and a nap in the shade can make it all right. Bernard Le Bouvier de Fontenelle, a French writer, loved Huygens' idea about life on Venus. He wasn't a researcher himself, but he could expertly make shows out of other people's achievements. De Fontenelle remembered that Venus was the Roman goddess of love, so he decided that the planet just had to shelter some race of courtly lovers. The climate is most favorable for love matches, the French fantasized, and obviously wanted to join the fun. Well, both he and Huygens were right about one thing. It's really hot on Venus, but they were dead wrong thinking that its atmosphere was similar to Earth's. In the 20th century, astronomers discovered that there is no oxygen needed for breathing. And still, Hollywood stubbornly believed in De Fontenelle's idea and portrayed Venus as a homeland of young Amazons who spent most of their days dreaming of brave astronauts. Sorry to disappoint you, but the planet could be so Earth-like only maybe a billion years ago before it turned into a scorching hell. Modern scientists try to understand how it actually happened. And can there be a civilization that had appeared on Venus before this transformation and is currently hiding beneath its surface? To find the answers to these questions, NASA has designed a mission called Veritas that will be sent to Venus in 2027. The newly developed radars will not only get a sneak peek at what lies below the planet's clouds, but scan its entire surface, covered with volcanoes. These data will let us go back in time and see how habitable, by our definition, Venus could be in the distant past. There's also an Indian orbiter called Shukrayan. It has similar characteristics, and so it may beat NASA and reach the destination a couple of years earlier. However, to solve the mysteries of Venus, it will need to land on its surface. Soviet scientists were the ones to get closer to this planet than everyone else. In 1966, they decided to launch Venera 3 space probe to the atmosphere of Venus. But the mission failed and didn't reveal anything new. When preparing for the subsequent missions, Venera 5 and Venera 6, Soviet engineers concluded that it really didn't take much to land on Venus. Just some aluminum probes equipped with parachutes. That was a big mistake. The last thing the landers managed to detect while approaching the surface was the pressure that was 100 times higher than that of Earth and the temperature that reached 500 degrees Celsius. And all of that was enveloped in sulfuric acid clouds. The readout seemed unbelievable, but the probes crashing proved there was no mistake. That's why the next probe, Venera 8, was made of titanium, and it really helped it survive during the descent. However, it only lasted 23 minutes on the surface until the planet's heat and pressure destroyed all electronics. The Soviet scientists didn't give up. Instead, they improved the subsequent probes so much that the team back on Earth finally received these photos and sounds.
This orange smoke is a very dense fog, consisting of carbon dioxide. When put under tremendous pressure, it remains liquid. If there were birds on Venus, they'd look like fish. And for almost 40 years, no spacecraft has dived into this acidic ocean. NASA engineers borrowed old Soviet developments for Da Vinci Plus, a mission expected to launch in 2029. The agency will send a cutting-edge probe to the clouds of Venus. It will be able to examine the planet's atmosphere for more than an hour and take pictures of everything it comes across. Meanwhile, Russia is designing its own mission called Venera D, where D stands for durable. It's expected to launch in the same year. The best Soviet spacecraft, Venera 14, was able to stay on the surface for 127 minutes, while Venera D is supposed to function 120 days. But eventually all these missions share the same purpose, to find life on the hellish planet. Although this form of life has nothing to do with what scientists of the past used to imagine. What evidence of life will the new probes be looking for on Venus? Astronomers believe that a planet is potentially habitable if water can be preserved in a liquid state on its surface. However, certain organisms don't need it to survive. For example, the bacteria found in Yellowstone's hot springs. Being aware of these extreme forms of life, in 2020, a team of astronomers headed by Professor Sarah Seeger unexpectedly found one intriguing detail in the atmosphere of Venus. In its clouds, the researchers detected phosphine, a toxic gas. On Earth, it's produced by that kind of bacteria living in Yellowstone. And if trapped up in the air of Venus, they'd feel absolutely at home. The scientists also made another point. Phosphine quickly breaks apart. So if there is a vast quantity of it in the atmosphere, it means something constantly generates new portions. Finally, a Japanese orbital probe has recently discovered that there is something in the atmosphere of Venus that actively absorbs the sun's ultraviolet rays. And again, that's what bacteria like to do in their spare time. Astrobiologists have reviewed this information and created an incredible picture of life on Venus. They suggest that local microorganisms live high above the ground where the air is not so hot and breed in sulfuric acid droplets. Uh, yeah. Now that's what I call passionate love, DeFontenelle would say if he could see that. Maybe that bacteria were the source of the radio waves recorded by NASA's Parker Solar Probe. Don't you think? Skeptics, however, don't hesitate to call all these anomalies just the results of the planet's natural processes. Besides, it's not completely clear how much phosphine the atmosphere of Venus actually contains. To dispel any doubts, NASA's Da Vinci Plus probe may need help from a European mission called Envision, but it will only launch in 2032. Do we really have to wait for discoveries for so long? Is there a chance to get these exciting questions answered sooner? That's exactly what scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology are going to do. Sarah Seeger, that very lady who found phosphine, has announced a privately funded mission to Venus to examine it independently from NASA. A startup called Rocket Lab can send a tiny probe there in 2023. Its main objective is to last in the atmosphere of Venus for at least 10 minutes and measure the amount of phosphine. A bit later, MIT wants to launch a larger probe that will deploy several aerostats to the planet's atmosphere. In a few days, they will manage to spot the droplets of sulfuric acid under a microspore and check if that passionate bacteria are there or not. But it still might be just a matter of luck. The most ambitious project from MIT is sending a huge aerostat like this to the atmosphere of Venus. The aircraft will be packed with all sorts of equipment and will be able to hover in the clouds for weeks. If something really exists there, it'll let us know. The exact launch date for this promising mission hasn't been chosen yet, but the fact that an expedition to search for life on Venus will be organized by a private research university and not by the government is a massive breakthrough for astronomy. My personal hope is that it'll be the MIT guys who will tell us that they've found the bacteria on Venus. But what's next? If almost the same organisms that live in Yellowstone inhabit our neighboring planet, that means that we are all aliens here and that life initially emerged on Venus and only then moved to Earth. Or 
Maybe Venusian bacteria are entirely different. If so, it may appear that all the universe is swarming with living beings and that discoveries regarding other planets will soon follow. Write in the comments what you expect from these future missions to Venus. Let's wait a few years and see who was right.